Whilst trying to better understand my Shapoko CNC machine to get better results from it, I ran into the question of drive belt tension, how much you should have, how to check it, and how it affects the machine performance. I failed to find any quantitative data to use, so I went and started measuring, and it turns out belt tension is quite important if you want to square and calibrate the machine effectively, and I think it wants to be calibrated. There's a couple of simple ways to measure belt tension, using a cheap luggage scale or a free phone app. We don't need our measurements to be perfect, just repeatable, and to set up your machine effectively you'll need a ruler and either the free phone app or just some ears. The machine has a single drive belt and motor on the x-axis, but two independent drive belts and motors on the two y-axes. When installed on the machine, the drive belts are tensioned on the aluminium rails between two tensioner clips by tightening the bolts to stretch the belt into a pre-tensioned state. We'll call this the static tension. The first method is to measure the force required to deflect the drive belt in the middle of a span. With the machine powered off, push the X-rail and the Z carriage out to their end stops. Now mark the midpoint of the belt span between the drive bully and the tensioner. That's about 450 millimeters on the long rails. On that mark, place a block of about 25mm 1 inch height for the long rail on an XXL or XL, or about 10mm height for the short rail. With the belt in the normal position, mark the top of the belt on the block and then measure the distance from the mark to the top. That's our deflection D. Loop the luggage scale around the belt and pull up until the top of the belt is flush with the top of the block. The measured weight on the scale is our measure of the deflection force. Knowing how stretchy the belt is, the tension modulus, we can put that weight measurement into a simple spreadsheet and find the belt static tension on our machine. Here's the data from my machine. The y-axis are reasonably well balanced, while the x-axis has quite a bit less tension. The much easier way to measure tension on the belt is to twang it and measure the frequency. For this, I'm using the Gates Carbon Drive Belt Tension app for bikes. It's free, and it measures in about the right range. To measure the tension using this method, we'll need to have a known length of belt we can get a clean tone from. Measure and mark a suitable length on your extrusion rail. I'm starting 200mm from the end plate using a 500mm length. On the short rails of a regular XL machine, you'll need to use shorter lengths. Put a small wooden block or the shank of a quarter inch cutter under the belt on each of the marks. This is to raise the belt up so we can get a clean tone. The app is easy enough to use, but it occasionally gets confused and gives an odd reading. Take a few samples and average out a reasonable value for the belt tone. As before, we take the frequency measurements, put them in the spreadsheet and get a static tension for the belts. These are all within about 10% of what I measured for the deflection method, so I'm quite happy with that. Having measured the belt tension, the question is, what should it be? At the low end we have the holding torque of the stepper motor at about 18 pounds or 80 newtons force. At the upper end we're bounded by the fatigue failure of the stepper motor or wear out of the bearings due to excess belt tension. Here's a quick lookup table with a range of values you might measure on your machine for both 280 and 500 millimeter baselines. If you want square joints and parts, it's key to get the base of the machine and the Y rails level and square. It's also important to ensure the X rail is square between the two Y rails. On mine, I had to shim the X rail to get it reasonably close. Typically, you measure the frame square corner to corner, and then check whether the X rail is square by measuring the homing distance on both Y axes. The machine homes on the right hand Y axis and then takes the same number of steps forward and backward on both the left and right Y axis motor and belt. The problem is if we have unequal belt tensions, then we stretch the belts unevenly, and that's going to result in an uneven distance as it moves towards the front of the machine. For my machine, the tension difference between the left and right Y belts suggests a 0.7mm offset by the time we get to the front of the machine. So to test this out, I measured the left and right homing offsets at the back of the machine, and then brought it all the way forward and measured the offsets at the front of the machine, assuming that the rails are equal length. Adding up these measurements, the machine was indeed 0.7mm shorter in its wire travel on the right hand side, meaning that it wasn't square by the time it had come to the front of the workspace. To try to correct this, I set up the blocks again on both left and right Y belts. Rather than measuring them this time, I simply played the tone on both belts, 
and then adjusted the left hand belt until its pitch came down to match the right hand belt as close as I could hear. After that adjustment I was down to 0.3mm difference across the two Y axes which over 800mm travel I thought was quite acceptable. So having learnt all this, what am I actually going to do about belt tension? Well first when I check the machine I'm going to twang the belts and in particular I'm going to check that the left and right Y belt have the same tone. I'll also use the gates out periodically to check the actual numbers for tension and I'll periodically check the front homing distance as well as the rear homing distance. I'll be posting the spreadsheet for turning deflection or frequency measurements into tensions and there'll be a link in the description for that. So that's pretty much it, it's all over bar the maths. If you want to see the maths for how these calculations are done or work through and point out the mistakes I've made then please carry on watching. In the deflection method, what we're doing is applying a force F to create a deflection D over our test segment length, LT. This extends the belt, creates additional tension. If we know the tension modulus of the belt, we can calculate what the original static tension was. With some simple trigonometry, we can calculate LE, the extension caused by the deflection. And from that, knowing the belt modulus lambda, we can also get TE, the additional tension caused by that deflection. Taking our deflection distance across the test segment length, we can also get theta, the angle of the triangle we're forming. And again, simple trigonometry tells us that F, our deflection force, must be 2 sine theta times the total tension in the belt. Some simple rearrangement of terms gives us TS, the static tension, before we deflected the belt. And finally, we can also extract ES, the static extension of the belt, how much we stretched it as we did up the tensioning clamps. And those are the calculations provided in the upper half of the belt tension calculation spreadsheet. The belt frequency calculation is actually quite a lot simpler. We have a test section of belt of known length vibrating at a known frequency. If we take the standard formula for the nth harmonic of a string under tension, express it in our measurement symbols and then perform a simple rearrangement, we can get a formula expressing the static tension in terms of the items we can measure on the belt. There's less data required for this as well as we only need the density of the belt and a sample value for that is also provided in the lower part of the sheet. So if you're still here, uh, thanks for hanging around through the maths and I hope you found that useful.